Okay, everybody. Here we are. I'm live. Ta da! From Monty's Trattoria in the West Village. This is our 10th anniversary, SRFF 2023, press day. People are having a wonderful time, as you can hear the chit chat in the back. But in a second, they will have to stop chit chatting so they can hear what I am going to say about this year's presentation. If you have just joined us, I am Nora Armani, and this is the Socially Relevant Film Festival New York. It's the 10th anniversary edition of our film festivals. It's hard to believe that we have come 10 years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 10 years. And during our nine previous editions, we have been able to screen 600 films from 40 countries. 40. That's 40 countries. Thank you. So sometimes I will be abandoning you because I am with people here and I don't want to ignore their presence and only talk to my live audience. But I will try to manipulate between here and there. So thank you for joining us. And if you haven't joined us yet, please do so any moment in the talk. Or if you didn't join us or you missed the boat, maybe it happens in life a few times, you can still catch it with the recording later. There we go. So let me pick up my notes because I don't know what I'm going to say from here on. Okay. So, the 10th anniversary edition of SR, Socially Relevant Film Festival New York, is hybrid. In-person and online events. SRFF opens on March 16 at the Lincoln Center. This time, we are graduating to the big auditorium. Wow. <laughs> the Walter Reed <clears throat> uh, Theater. Uh, and we will have red carpet, two films screening back to back, and I'm going to talk about the films in a second. Red carpet, two films screening back to back, followed by a reception at the Foreman Gallery next door to the Walter Reed Auditorium. So we are so happy and so thrilled, and I must stay here that we could not have come this far without the help of a bunch of people that I would like to personally thank. First and foremost, the festival team who are here, most present, because this is not something that one person can do. Everybody says, oh, you made it, you came 10 years. Yeah, I did, but I didn't do it alone. I had help, I had people who were equally invested in the matter, equally um, interested in the mission and vision that Socially Relevant Film Festival has and were able to help in many, many ways. So first of all, that's the big thank you. And the other one is also to our sponsors and partners, because without sponsors and partners, we could not have done this. So as I was saying, it's something that we cannot, nobody can do by themselves. It's like running a huge operation on a shoestring budget with no uh, uh, grants. I mean, we do have a few grants, but they came in a little later in the game, uh, and we are very grateful to them. But it was a labor of love, and that love was shared with everybody who was part of the festival team and who is still part of the festival team. Otherwise, it would not have been possible. Without sponsorship and partnership, of course, none of this is ever possible. So thank you, everybody, who are out there and have supported the festival. The SRFF 2023 official selection uh, competition categories are narrative feature films, Documentary feature films, narrative shorts, documentary shorts, 
women directed films will be acknowledged separately and this year we have a very special section which is taking place uptown in west harlem and it is supported by the west harlem development corporation who uh, offered us a grant for that section and it's called rejoice resist bipoc mm. films and filmmakers so we have a whole set of uh, events taking place at um mrhs at um uh, dear mama cafe where we are going to have a film projection with a bunch of shorts and we are going to also have um a panel discussion about bipoc representation in films followed by a hip hop band so we are about films and film festivals but we also want to hear some fun music and dance then we have um the following day we have the Colombian University Maison Française where we continue the uptown section of the festival followed by um two days there and then on our closing night this year we go to JCC Harlem where we also screen a film followed by jazz followed by the award ceremony and a lot of fun things the films programs grouping and synopsis will be posted on the website the selection of documentaries and narratives are already here i'm going to make the presentation and finish the live because we're not going to sh to show the um, trailers during this live presentation it's not going to work very well but when you go on our website ratedsrfilms.org you will be able to click on whichever trailer you want and you will be able to see everything so um the partnerships are welcome we're still open you go again on the website <laughs> and click sponsorships and there you can come and be part of this amazing adventure for the moment we have uh, west harlem development corporation indie picks dutch culture usa who are back with us again because they have supported our festival a few years in a row in the past telefilm canada and the canadian consulate general um and we are waiting to hear from a bunch of uh, sponsors we are in talks and we are finalizing so i don't want to announce anything before it has become final 10 years have gone by quickly we are proud to have had the opportunity to screen over 600 films from 40 countries it's an amazing feat and we have people here in our team who have seen all 600 films <laughs> i'm not joking so um, the films highlight the work of talented filmmakers and dedicated filmmakers who um, have offered us the added bonus of learning about the human condition, filmmaking, and engaging an audience as the first step towards raising awareness of social issues. I always like to underline that I am first and foremost actress so thank you very much this is the applause moment uh, and <laughs> I'm joking i'm joking so uh two uh and i founded the festival in 2013 as a reaction to the proliferation of violence in our society and specifically on screen and also the fact that um we are bombarded with posters and announcements that depict this violence and dwell upon them and if you don't like violence maybe you don't want to go and see that movie but if you're standing at a bus bus stop and you know all these violent images come in front of you then you're really being invaded so that was one of the reactions i had that it is time to offer an alternative um form of entertainment and also because a tragedy happened in my family when the lives of the two dearest and nearest people, namely my cousin, Vanya Exerjan, and my uncle, Jack Exerjan, were victims of a hate crime. So it 
order for me to commemorate them, I founded this festival, and we have an award in my cousin's name, which is given out to a person or a film that deals with empowering women uh, in society. So uh, that became this festival. Initially, it was about nonviolence, but then I realized it might be a bit limiting, so opened it up to include all sorts of social issues. This new edition has topics such as climate change, family and adoption, LGBTQ rights, home and health, disability, incarceration and freedom, New York City. We have two films dedicated to New York City, racism and of course, as I mentioned, the BIPOC films section. This year, we have a roster of 76 films on offer, and I didn't want to go that many. I thought maybe this year, it's our 10th anniversary, we should, on the contrary, focus on less films at the 10th anniversary, but then there were so many good, excellent films about such important and timely topics that I couldn't say, I couldn't deny or I couldn't eliminate any of them. So we ended up with 76. But we have 10 venues in which the festival is happening. For On the occasion of our 10th anniversary, I wanted 10 venues, and we have 10 venues. So uh, there we go. Um, what else do I have to say? Yes, we also have Q&A sessions with the filmmakers when they are available, and they are in New York to uh, screen their films and talk about their films with the audience. We have Meet the Filmmakers sessions that will be broadcast on a regular basis on our YouTube channel. And uh, we also have a smartphone filmmaking workshop, which will be offered by Ching Zhu, one of our team members and a owned uh, award-winning filmmaker herself, who uses smartphones a lot in her films. She's going to give away all the secrets. And we will have also a table read of the finalist scripts in the festival script writing competition. And two of our team members, uh, Lucy Triton and Mike Place, are in charge of that section. So the mission of SRFF is to shine the spotlight on filmmakers who tell compelling, socially relevant human interest stories across a broad range of social issues without resorting to violence and violent forms of storytelling. When I say violence and violent forms, I mean gratuitous violence. Of course, if the film is dealing with a topic, and you need to show something that is a bit violent, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not censoring that, but we're talking about films and filmmakers who dwell upon the theme of violence. Opening night tickets, VIP tickets that get you both films, a red carpet, opening celebration, and also a, 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 a reception to cap the opening evening are all included in that VIP price. And for a limited time, we have $100 early bird tickets that allow you to come and see everything, including the $50 VIP opening night. So it's a great deal. And an early bird $7 single ticket that can at, give to access any single film. All these are, will be posted soon on our website and if not on our social media. So please follow us, like us, love us, worship us, come and have fun with us. So I'm going to turn off the live now and leave you with uh, your device or your computer to go and watch the trailers that are on our website www.ratedsrfilms.org. Thank you all for being with us and see you soon.